What's going out there on YouTube land? Dan here from Geek Counts Radio doing another From the Long Box video. This is where I go through my collection, pick out a book, and, and talk about it. Sometimes it's just talking about how it shaped my fandom as a comic book reader. Sometimes it's reviewing it. Sometimes it's taking one of those pesky issues I've owned forever, never read, and finally sitting down to read it to give you my thoughts on it. Uh, this week with the Fantastic Four finally coming back to the pages of Marvel, comics, I thought I'd go through some of my Fantastic Four collection, which is not a huge collection, but I had a few issues I thought that could be fun to talk about and get people's reaction to it. Uh, and this week it's a, it's a different story as well. With It's the last Fantastic Four story by Stanley and, and John Romano Jr. Uh, and What's really interesting about this is that uh, it's seeing kind of Stan Lee working in a more of a modern setting. And the idea behind this is like Stan Lee trying to write what would be the ideal final Fantastic Four story. What would finally end their their era as, as comic book, the first family, uh, outside of, you know, having movie rights uh, being taken away and trying to get those back, actually within the pages of the comics. And reading through it, the first thing that struck me is, uh, is that it does not feel like Stan Lee at all. Uh, you know, I've read a lot of, of classic Stan Lee from his X-Men to his Fantastic Four books and we know how he he likes to be overly verbose very energetic a, a lot of adjectives this is him turned down a great deal now part of that wonders is like how much is this is stan lee how much is this a ghostwriter how much is this the artist uh, it's, it's hard to say we do get this um uh, script in the back which is kind of what was what stanley went over and his his notes and it's not there are some specific dialogue beats that are, are placed in here, but it's more of a general outline uh, per se. So that, that could be, it's if reads like him talking to someone, explaining what he'd want the story to be, and then them taking that and then kind of making it more of a, of a modern twist in a way, which makes you wonder if you're, if you're having Stan Lee on a book, if that's your selling point, maybe it seems why not go all in and make it like Stan Lee. Um, but overall, the story, I think it's fine. Does, does it seem like this would be the final Fantastic Four story if they were ever having a final season finale or whatever you want to call it, series finale? Does it seem like this would be the story that would end it all? Uh, I don't know necessarily agree with that. It, it's, it's okay. It be, opens up with the Fantastic Four doing what the Fantastic Four does, saving uh, some, peop some people from these terrorists, doing it basically with ease. You know, they're well seasoned at this point and you know, ben, some great Ben Grimm moments within this and I gotta say John Romano Jr. who I know has a style that is not ideal for everyone some people kind of hate it um, it's very you know has a blockiness to it sometimes his faces look very similar um, it, it can look you know it's stiff at times I think it works for Fantastic Four because you know it does it is somewhat reminiscent of, of, of Jack Kirby in, in a way is he as good as Jack Kirby no no one is but it certainly has a, a feel to it and when I first saw the way he drew the watcher I was like man that doesn't look like the watcher at all it just looks like Charles Xavier who ate too many cheeseburgers and got taller but going back to actually reading some of the classic Fantastic Four stories and how the Watcher was originally drawn, it actually does fit more. Like his head wasn't as, it kind of grew as time went on. It kind of got redesigned more and more. So perhaps that was what he was going for. Uh, and I think the coloring does help a great deal. Uh, it, especially when you get into these sequences. The actual story itself, after they, they, they save that terrorist group, we see the Fantastic Four in a place where they're they're basically complacent with their life in, in a way, where they realize they're in a transition period, their kids are getting older, uh, they're, you know, they're, they don't know if there's any much more to go. They kind of discussed retiring in a way. They talked about how they don't make any money off what they do. Everything gets donated to charity. Uh, but is that really establishing a future for their kids that are now getting older? Uh, and it, it's almost said in jest, but then what ends up happening, we have uh, this special council group that is the most powerful beings in a way. And they're not actually like physical man manifestations of people. They're just beings of thought. And they judge mankind that mankind has gone to the point where it needs to be eliminated. It's become too warlike, it's evil, and it needs to be undone. So they send this adjudicator to the earth to basically destroy it. Um, you know, it's like a gigantic celestial with a dead head head and who's beefed up a little bit. And he comes to earth to basically say, yeah, you're, you guys messed up, we need to destroy you. So I'm gonna do that, but I'll give you some time to settle your your, your effects, and then we'll 
after that time period's end, then you'll be done. It's just it's just how it is. Uh, and it reminds me a lot of actually uh, the day that Earth stood still, because what you end up having is this gigantic, you know, alien creature just standing there, um, very stoic, not really doing anything. But eventually, we see more and more people coming in trying to attack it from Namor to the U.S. Army, and all it does is slightly move or uh, adjust itself and destroy anything that attempts to uh, take it over or, or it's, you know, with ease. It's to the point where nothing is more powerful than it. Uh, so th basically there, there's nothing the Fantastic Four can do. People start turning on them, thinking, you know, you're supposed to be our protectors and you, you, can't, you can't protect us. And it ends up becoming the, this, like in a way, like a... A love letter to the classic Fantastic Four with all kind of a bunch of notable characters showing up from Namor to Silver Surfer to Galactus you know, all just you know playing their part and all, all coming to the same conclusion saying that really there's nothing you can do this being beyond even the power of someone like Galactus uh, he, he can't help um, even Doctor Doom tries to play play a role so it, it was kind of cool seeing like, okay, like, like series finales often do, they bring back all the old characters and give them one more show to kind of like, let's, let's bring everyone that made this what it is, give them an opportunity, which made me kind of surprised that there was no Mole Man, right? Knowing how much of a role he played in early Fantastic Four that he, there was no showing up of his creatures or anything like that. I felt like they had the opportunity there to maybe give some love, love to Mole Man because, you know, he, he is such a underrated character in my opinion. So... You know, and even you know, we have the Avengers and everything like that, and and it gets to the point. I don't want to necessarily spoil it because it's probably a lot of people haven't read this yet, but they do find a way to solve it, and it gets basically the idea of uh, what's just and if humanity is deserving of this, and what makes humanity actually deserving to move on, and their ability to kind of you know uh, find justice and find forgiveness, uh, even for people that maybe don't deserve it in a way. Um, so, Reed does do some questionable things to find a solution which often he would do um, but kind of like how it ends up being the final story I think it were it ended up losing me a little bit and without spoiling it basically it you know it's not that everyone dies or anything like that it's just you know where you see a lot of that early conversation kind of come to play at the end and I just I don't know if it really bought it as like this would be the story to end the Fantastic Four from doing what they do like there was just no way to go from here just because it felt like an adventure they've kind of been on before in a way um, it was you know enjoyable it was fun uh, it just again felt very reminiscent of, of many other Fantastic Four comics which is, I guess makes sense as that's what it was attempting to do so if you're a person who maybe doesn't love Stanley's classic writing and don't want don't want to see it within a modern setting do know that you know you will be able to read this and you know it's not like being too, uh, spending too much time explaining the obvious. And I think, like I said, Jer um, John Romano Jr.'s art, I thought works well with this. Uh, it's, he was on point. I think he really brought, brought it maybe because he knew he's working with Stan Lee. I, I'm not sure, but uh, I think even the normal detractors it would, would find it, it enjoyable. So, and, and not like hate the way it looks like. I tend to like his work the most when he's working with more kinetic energy and there's more violence in a way. I think that's where his art works best with this being a lot of conversations and stuff like that i was surprised that it wasn't more there, there it wasn't dull or anything like that but um uh, it was solid it was enjoyable but you know uh i think there's a reason why it's not really been talked about that much it was it does feel like your your ploy to like here's an idea let's let's try to make the fantastic four relevant again by just bringing in stanley and do the story and then it just kind of goes by the wayside but yeah, I'd be curious to see if there's more people who've read this and their opinion on it. You know, what would your final Fantastic Four story be? But for now, just remember, comics are for everyone. The key is finding the right one. Until next time, thanks for watching.